That's absolutely wow. true. That's wow. right. Give them the and counter, that's ladies a and great gentlemen. Segue I was ready because for this him. entire episode was brought to you by Blue Diamond. What is going on, everybody? <laughs> Critic and the Common Man, new studio. Who this? Um, actually, not really new. Just kind of pulled everything in a little bit. I noticed on my video that you guys couldn't see half of this stuff. So now feel free to check it out, take a look. Um, sorry if I sound a little bit congested. Apparently there's Saharan dust coming over. I don't know, dude, have you ever heard of that? Have you seen this on Facebook yes. now? It's like this whole thing where there's like Saharan dust that comes over and it just hits Florida every year. I feel like that was never a thing when I was a kid. <laughs> Nobody was ever talking about, I grew up in Florida. Nobody ever talked about the Saharan dust. I have, Maybe? we have Martian dust coming here, so. Oh, right, yeah. right, right. It's, it's an epidemic. Yeah. Uh, so if your allergies are acting up, if you're in Florida, it's Saharan. If you're in California, Martian. Um, so who knows? Common knowledge, really. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I feel like maybe they just didn't know that was a thing when I was growing up, and now they do. I don't know. Either way, up today, everybody, we are going to be talking about season one. Actually, I don't even know if I can say season one because I think it's the only season there's going to be. Yeah, I'm pretty be. sure it's like a one, one and done. Fair enough. The one shot. We're going to be talking about Yasuke on Netflix, um, the anime. Chris, you saw this, uh, watched it, and then recommended it. So what do you think, man? How did this uh, catch your eye? Well, I heard about it. I heard about it. Um, when, I, when, I, when I said we should watch it, I hadn't actually seen it yet. Um, I heard about it. I, I, I heard about this, uh, you know, the first black samurai, the only black samurai. I, I don't know. But I was just like, oh, yeah, I think Yasuke, that sounds really cool. Like, let's let's watch it. Um, and uh, and and yeah, like it was supposed to be like this groundbreaking, you know, kind of new thing for Netflix to be doing. And um, it just looked cool. And, and uh, I was excited for a historically accurate uh, rendition of, you know, this this famous black samurai. And uh, <laughs> I was not prepared for what this turned out to be. Dude, so not at all what I expected. Yeah. I'm glad you said that because from looking at the just the title, this was so literally from the first 60 yeah, seconds. You're like, I was like, this is not what, what? I thought it was going to be. Um, so I, I'm curious, like, what did you I, I, I like I said, I expected a historically accurate anime rendition of this story. I thought it was going to be a drama. I don't know. I don't know what I was expecting, but I wasn't expecting giant robots and spellcasters. <laughs> And uh, I, I don't know. So what did you think? Like, it, it, was this up your alley? A couple, couple things right off the bat. Number one, I looked it up. Apparently, Yasuke is Japanese for the black one. That's literally what it oh. means. That's the, that's the translation. So I thought that was kind of an interesting title. Um, obviously, they, that was planned. Number two, no, this was not up my alley. Now, to be totally honest with you, I am not as... I don't know anything about anime. I, I, I don't know anything about anime. I watched Naruto as a kid. I thought it was dope. <clears throat> watched a little bit of Dragon Ball Z, and that's pretty much it. Like, you know, there's a lot of people now with Crunchyroll subscriptions and, you know, even Hulu and stuff, or even Netflix, really. The anime selection is not bad. Damn, there's now I want, Attack on Titan, now One I want Piece, sushi. One, uh, yeah, My, My Hero Academia, all of these huge, mega popular shows that people love. Um, I just never got into a lot of those. I, I dabbled in anime a little bit when I was younger, and then didn't really fall in love with it like a lot of people did. So I don't know anything about anime. A couple of things, though. Number one, the art style on this, and not just the art style, but kind of everything, the whole package, like the art style, the music choices, and then just the plot as well, and the immediate things being the fact that we're dealing with like samurais and people with bow and arrows and these old temples, but then we're also dealing with giant robots mm -hmm. that are flying around and shooting guns. I don't like that that mashup. That seems weird to me. Why would why would anybody be using a sword or shooting a bow and arrow when there's robot technology that you absolutely could be using instead? I, I, that that was very confusing to me. The whole thing. Um, I liked the idea for this story. I would have liked it better had it been what you and I thought it was going to be, which was a little bit more real feeling story about you know a black person who ends up in Japan somehow. Uh, and then becomes the first samurai and, and fights his way mm -hmm. into into being a hero. What we ended up getting was this weird melding of like, okay, all like you said, all these different types of powers and creatures. Somebody's a can turn into a bear. You know, this person's like they're they're in the astral plane, and there's also these giant robots that are shooting laser beams and stuff. The whole thing was just very strange to me, man. Um, so overall, not really up my alley to be honest. Didn't love it. But I, I will say that I, there were certain things about it that I actually really did appreciate. 
couple of them being Lakeith Stanfield. I love him. This guy, Takahiro Hira, who was Oda, I swear I've heard his voice before. I don't know where, don't but know. like there was a lot of voice, there was a lot of voices Oda, in this that I really thought I had heard of. Who yeah. was apparently um, incredibly ruthless, by the way. They portrayed him as this like great leader, but apparently he was like power hungry and also uh, kind of vicious on the battle. Like he enjoyed killing people. Like oh, so that was a real person? But Nobunaga, yeah, and so so was Yasuke. Oh, yeah, they they were both. Okay, so they took a they took a historically accurate story yes. and then just put their own spin yes. on it. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. See, I did not know that. Yeah, so um, I I agree with everything you said. I I went into this expecting a historically accurate, just cool. I don't know. Like, did you ever watch Roroni Kenshin back in the day? It's, it's it was a whole story nope. about uh, just a samurai, a, a Ronin, which means a wanderer. So it was like a samurai without anybody to like serve. It was just a cool story. I thought it was going to be something like that, where it was going to be like this dark samurai epic, but it, it it turned into the most convoluted story, the strangest mashup of of, of styles. <laughs> I I will be honest, it was really hard for me to get through this, and I only did it for the podcast. Dude, I I'm a little bit relieved because I was worried that I was going to have to beat around the bush here and try to try to appease to you because I didn't like it yeah, and I yeah. thought you were going to. But it was a little bit of everything. Like even the intro song, Strange. I thought, like did not Strange. fit what was going on yeah. at all. It was like, and the the weird kaleidoscope art styles and colors, like the whole thing to me was just it, it just off. There was no like, it didn't style feel to like it. it. It was it was like a yeah, weird, but, or it was the strangest style. I don't know. I, I don't know. But it just it felt like it was. It almost felt like there were too many different competing, uh, differentiating I guess artistic styles. You know, totally. you have like this hip hop feel, and then you have this like Japanese traditional feel, but then also like a high tech feel. Like the lady was like Russian or something, like some sort of Eastern European, uh, and she could turn into a bear, and she was just way out of place. The robot was completely was, out of place. It was so strange. It really it, was. It ended up just making kind of brain dead to the whole thing. Like at the end, again, spoiler warning, guys. If you if you haven't seen Yasuke. You probably wouldn't be watching this, but if you haven't seen Yasuke, go ahead and give it a watch on Netflix. Come back and, and we can talk about it. Let us know what you think. Um, but even at the end, like when the robot goes and does the self-destruct mm-hmm. thing and blows himself up, didn't I care. Didn't either. Was not attached. I didn't Was care. not attached to that robot, robot whatsoever. Like that, characters. Not even, even think, the main one. <laughs> I know. And I think that that was supposed to be sad. Didn't care. Yeah. When that bear woman was like getting crumbled by those weird sorcerer people, <laughs> that was the Naruto epic. Hand but yeah, I mean, that was insane. But I think it, it was too much. Mm-hmm. It was way too busy. And the clashing Absolutely. of styles did not lend itself well to the story they were trying to there tell. There were some cool aspects to it. Like, it was dope when they were firing arrows and the arrows went through that barrier and then they turned into, like, energy arrows. Like, it's, it, it's all cool yeah. things, but it did not fit the world that they were trying to portray. Most of this show it, did not portray the, the, the world well. It just it was very strange. And I you know, this guy was supposed to have been a samurai who fought however many years ago, but he just seemed so disconnected from mm-hmm. that. I don't know. The whole thing was any of these stylistic choices by themselves probably would have made for their own independent like decent independent exactly. show. Yes. But there was too much going on in this. And yeah. I, I get that it was supposed to be artistic and it's supposed to be a little bit different, but I think they ended up just making it too busy too and much. It, it lost yeah, me. I agree. It lost me. I, I gotta be honest. I mean I was I don't want to like sit there and be on my phone or be distracted while I watch this and then come in and say, Oh, it sucked. Like that's not fair. So I really tried to get through this, but just like you mm-hmm. said, honestly, man, really struggled. Yeah, to there was about like, show. Did, did not like it. There was like a good week between episodes where I like, I didn't finish it. I was just, I watched the first half and I was like, I don't want to watch the rest to be f- the fortunate <clears throat> thing. And I know this is bad to say, but fortunately the episodes were pretty yeah. short and there were only six of them. Yeah. Like this is only total. There's only three hours of content in this whole mm-hmm. thing. So it's basically like watching a yep. movie. Um, and I was happy about that because had these been an hour long episodes each, Ooh. I don't know that we would be sitting yeah. here watching this. Like, I don't know that we could be, I don't know if I could make it honestly, dude. It was like, I felt like I was wasting time. I was like, this is not, I good. almost feel like an hour long episode might have helped the story because everything just felt rushed. Like, I didn't. I didn't really understand yeah. what the story was. Like he was taking the family to a person to help her, and then she got stolen. Like everything just felt rushed. Like every episode had like a beginning yeah. and an end, and then it was like okay, on to the next one. Like 
And then there was this creepy Catholic priest in the beginning that was like trying to get this girl for her power and take her over, but then yeah. he's dead. So then at the end, then all the people that he was fighting with just appear when she talked to him through the astral plane and was like, oh, now we're fighting with you guys now. It was like, dude, the, it was, there was a lot was going rushed. on. It there just, was the story a felt lot. Rushed. Yeah. Yeah. There was a lot going on. Also, total side note real quick. If you're wondering why I have just an empty shelf here, the goal, people, the goal for the shelf, I don't know. If you've been following Critic in the comment, you'll know that I just rescued a kitten. And he's still a little bit small. But what you can't kind of see is there's another shelf like right here, and I've made steps. So I, ideally, the cat will hang out up here while I podcast. But that's also, like, perfect world kind of thing. The cat will probably never go up there. So that may end up being trinkets. <laughs> right now, just But if you see up. the cat up there, that'd be amazing. If, if he jumps up there, then, then this whole thing is a great success. Otherwise, you may see some stuff on that <laughs> shelf. Anyway, um, I'm glad that you had similar feelings for this one to me, Chris. Let's try to find some positives in this. Yeah, what yeah. did you like in Yasuke uh, after watching this so whole season? I did actually like the art style. Um like the, the not see, me. I know you didn't. Not yeah, me. it it yeah. is a strange style, but it, it gives me some Samurai Champloo vibes, which is another anime, uh, an American made anime. Cool. Same same creators as Cowboy Bebop, which I'm sure you've heard of. Um, I have heard. Yeah, of that so same yeah. creator, Samurai Champloo is another. It's uh, I think 12 episodes or 24 episodes, but it's one season, um, really really short, like 15 20 minute episodes, and it just follows these these other samurais very strange but it's all hip hop style but the way they do it is clever so it 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 fits it all feels kind of like this one world is just a little strange it's like it's like another person's take on this feudal japan era but the fighting style in samurai nice. champloo is amazing the animation is so well done it's fluid um the way they fight just feels very real and this almost had that vibe. Some of the fight scenes in this were very well choreographed, but then there were just moments where things got ruined, like, uh, you know, a robot comes by. It's just, it, it, for all of the good art style that, you know, the the stylization and everything, the, the amount of effort that was put into the animation, the story and the context pulls everything and the view, it pulls the viewer out of the moment. And you almost, you yeah. almost can't even appreciate that because you're, you're stuck wondering what the hell is going on. So as far as the art style goes, I was trying to figure it out the whole time why I didn't like it. And I was wondering, is there too much detail and it ends up making everything kind of muddled or is there not enough? And I ended up realizing that it wasn't so much the, the style, it was like the art, like the color palette. The color palette of the whole thing. Like it just felt really dark. Mm -hmm. A lot of the stuff felt really dark, especially when they were fighting, could yes. not tell who was who. Like when they were fighting each other, no idea. When the robot came in and was bouncing around, I couldn't tell if it was killing good guys or bad guys. Like I honestly, they all like, all the armors and stuff looked exactly the same. It was just a bunch of dudes in black armor fighting each other. Had no idea basically what was going on. Um, <clears throat> I, I don't know. I mean, and again, I, I, I don't know shit about anime. So if this is like a classic style that is pretty widely revered, I, I mean, I just don't get it. Dude, let me tell you about my, my experience trying to get into anime. A buddy of mine really wanted me to watch My Hero Academia, even though there's a bunch of that out there. There's like 10 seasons of that or something. Maybe not that much, but a lot. So he gave me, um, he's like, you got to watch this show. You can try it on Crunchyroll, which if you guys are familiar, Crunchyroll is like an anime streaming platform. Uh, and it's, it's free. Well, there's a free version and it has ads, of course, and you can go and watch a bunch of anime. So I'm like, all right, yeah, I'll do that. Like, let me get the free version and I'll just watch some of this My Hero Academia and that's it, dude. Could not do it. Every, like, if you're going to get Crunchyroll, you have to pay for the ad-free version because the oh, ads yeah. that come up on there are mind-melting, dude. Like, <laughs> and they play the same ads over and over again. The first episode of the show I tried to watch, I ended up every, like, three minutes, because the episodes are not that long. Every three minutes, I kept getting this ad about this Japanese penguin who was counting to 20, and it was, like, some sort of kid's game. So I'm like, oh, yeah, let me watch this. Let me watch this show. And, like, my wife already doesn't like anime, so she's like, oh, whatever, like, just trying to bear through it. And, like, every three minutes, dude, it would be like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then it would be like, uh, Penguin King. And it was like a kid's game to help him learn how to count in English or something. Dude, dude. So if you're going to... If you're going to get a Crunchyroll subscription, do yourself a favor. <laughs> pay the $5 a month because I, I it is mind-melting shit, dude. It is like torture kind of level stuff. It's like it's uh, pretty rough. Little Einstein. Have you ever seen Little Einstein? Yes. You ever put that shit on? Yes. It's like it's like acid trips <laughs> yeah. for children. It's That's exactly what it is. The ads on Crunchyroll are nightmare fuel, dude. It's bad. 
Um, so that did not go well. I ended up having to go to Hulu and watch some stuff there instead. Uh, yeah, I don't know, man. This, this one was a miss for me. As yeah, far same. as positives, though, well, I can't say that I enjoyed the art style. I will say that I like the voices. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like they, they had a pretty solid cast here. Lakeith Stanfield, who, of course, you know. And if you don't know him, guys, if you don't know the name, just look him up. You'd remember him. He's in Get Out. Um, he's in, um, what's that movie? It's like, I'm so, uh, How Can I Help You or something like that. He was good in that, too. Hold on. Let me look it up. I'm trying to look at his uh, He's in a lot of stuff movies. lately. Yeah. Yeah, lately he has been in a ton of stuff. If you look him up, you're going to know him. You're going to know exactly what this is. This about. is him. Look, Lakeith, um, come here. There you go. Yeah. Thanks, Lakeith. Great job in this. He was fantastic. And the, and the rest of the cast was, too. The voice acting in this was great. Unfortunately, that's about where I stop in, in complimenting this show. It was bad. Yeah. I thought it was boring, man. I, I wasn't too into it. Same. Uh, honestly, I, I, I don't it. really have much else to say other than I, I was really hoping for something. Like, you know, dude, when, when I saw that it was coming out, I was like, dude, we have to watch this. This is, is going to be epic. Uh, I, well, I don't know. and to be fair, the, the like the synopsis and the idea of this sounded awesome. Mm-hmm. And I think had it been like a little more historically accurate representation of what, you know, who Yasuke really was and the, his story, I bet you we'd be sitting here talking about how awesome yep. it was because it is a cool idea. But I think we said it early and, and that was pretty much it. There was just way too many styles coming together in this thing to try to make this big melting pot of anime nonsense. Mm-hmm. Um so overall, of course, you know, it's a TV show, so it's not rated like uh, like movies are. But so, you know, we don't have any IMDb to go off of. But a scale of one to ten, Chris, after watching this thing, where do you come in on Yasuke? Um, I'm going to say that it's a, a five for me. It's it's middle of the road. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to say that it's a five just because there was a lot of hype for it. It was it kind of portrayed itself as being this like uh uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It just like um, groundbreaking series, right. and uh, right. I, I don't know. It just it's it. There was so much effort put into it because an animated series like this is so hard to make. So much time and effort has to go into it, and unfortunately, well, and this is pretty big for Netflix. Yeah, to do this yeah, too, isn't it? I mean, Netflix breaking into the anime game. That's that, that could potentially be big. This was a little bit of a swing and a miss, yeah. but doesn't mean they're not going to knock one out of the park. I didn't later. like the story, I, I, and, and you know that I, I'm yeah. a huge. I'm huge when it comes to story. Like that. That is my biggest thing. Is I I look at the story, at the plot, and everything, and I I break down the plot points, and I just didn't see a good story here. It wasn't developed well enough. It was rushed. It was too convoluted. Right. There was just too many moving pieces, and it, it's just not enough. There's not enough for you as a viewer to to lock down on and start to actually care about these characters. Um, I just uh, I'm gonna say a five. It just it wasn't there for me. It it missed missed most of the marks. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm going to come in even a little bit lower. I'm going to come in at a four and a half. And my reasoning, other than what we've said so far, is just that, you know, when I feel like I'm forcing myself to watch a show just because we're going to do the podcast on it, it's, it was hard to yeah. watch. It was, it was just it was just convoluted. Um, and, and I kind of felt myself getting confused, but not caring that I was confused. I was like, ah, whatever, let's just get through this thing. Um, props to the voice acting. Would not watch this again and unfortunately wouldn't recommend it. Uh, I would tell people about it, but I Same. would not recommend that they watch Same. it. Same. I think I'd be like, yeah, um, so that show came out. Good luck. Yeah, yeah, that show, yeah, that show, Yasuke, eh, wasn't great. Wouldn't recommend it. That's pretty much how the conversation's going to go, talking about Yasuke to people yeah. uh, in the street. Which streets. sucks, but, yeah. So, that's it. Chris, you got anything else for Yasuke before we jump into our current event for today? Uh... No. All right. Um, well, you guys, let us know what you think down below of Yasuke. We're about to jump into our current event here. But if we are totally missing the point of this whole thing and the style style choices and everything were out of this world, leave a comment. Let's get a discussion going. We'd be interested to hear what you guys have to say. Uh, thumbs up is always appreciated. Thumbs down. Hey, fair is fair. You know, we, we aren't going to try to make this something it isn't. If you if you loved Yasuke and just do not understand the review, uh, let us know and we'll we'll see if we can figure out why. Okay, um, up today, Chris, for our current event, a little bit of more, a little more good news from the Jurassic Park front, which you can't even tell. This was a flop. This poster here is actually Jurassic Park. That's going to have to get moved because it's literally just a black box. <laughs> um, the like Jurassic Park logo is too high up on the screen, so we're working out the kinks, people. Um, the the director Colin Trevorrow has come out and said that uh, Sam Neill, Laura Dern, and Jeff Goldblum will be in this movie for the majority of the oh, film. Dope. He's saying that they are going to be a main the main characters in this film, uh, which I think is good. No offense to Chris Pratt. 
He, I think, actually did great. Bryce Dallas Howard did great, too. I don't think they were the problem with these Jurassic World movies at all. In fact, Jurassic World itself, not a, not a horrible movie. Um, check out our Jurassic Park franchise review if you guys want to hear more of what we have to say on that. That's a long episode, yep. but um, pretty funny one and, and a good one. If you're a big Jurassic Park fan, we did a whole like two-hour synopsis of everything from Jurassic Park to, to Jurassic World Dominion, I think, at the, at the yeah. time. Um, so let us know, but yeah, man. So some good news. We're going to get the original, the original three back and they're going to be the main characters. Do you think that will be enough to potentially save this franchise? Well, it's, it's really hard to come and make a movie better than lost world. So it's, yeah. It, yeah. Wow. <laughs> um, lost world and Yasuke yeah, pretty much you know, right, right next to um, each other for me. Well, from what I understand, this is the finale. Like this is the last one they're making, right? Uh, so they say they may pull a Fast and Furious right. on us and tell us that they need to wrap it up with a final trilogy right. or something. Who knows? I, I think this is supposed to be it until they do something else with dinosaurs and they just won't call it Jurassic Park or Jurassic World. But I think this is supposed to be it. Yes. Um, I'm beyond excited for this. Uh, I, I mean, I, I will watch it even if it wasn't them. Like, I, I love Jurassic Park. I grew up on that. It's easily in my top, like, 20 movies for sure. Um, I think in my top 10 yeah. as well, if I, whatever the point is, um, I, I, I don't know. I don't know about it could, it could, if, if people are getting nostalgic enough, if people, you know, from when that movie first came out, the ones who were watching it, if, if they flood to the movie theaters and it's good enough, it could revitalize a franchise and, and potentially open the door for maybe spinoffs and stuff like that, which I can't, I don't see why. If I was a major motion picture production studio and you had a, a brand like Jurassic Park, I probably wouldn't close it off either. I, I, I would say that I was, you know, yeah. ending this storyline and maybe creating a spinoff series uh, some, somehow. Yeah, I don't think I don't think that dinosaurs are too played out no. yet. Now, some people may disagree with that. That's kind of a, the, the that's the question. Are people done with dinosaurs? Are we over it? I am personally not. But then again, Jurassic Park I am very open about saying that is literally my favorite movie ever. It just is. How do you, like, nobody but has done better than them. That's the thing. No, they haven't. They haven't. The question is going to be, not can they make good dinosaur content, but what other story can you tell with dinosaurs that's going to be more entertaining? Because we've yeah. done the park story, which was pretty groundbreaking and insanely creative. Now the question is, what else can be done with dinosaurs that can top that in, in the sense of creative mm -hmm. writing? That's that's going to be the trick. But as far as this franchise, no doubt I'm excited to see it. I would go see any Jurassic Park movie, Jurassic World movie. It doesn't matter how many there are. But the question is, is it going to be enough to have Laura Dern, Sam Neill, Jeff Goldblum, having them back, do you think that's going to be, an, and this is all speculation, but do you think that's going to be enough to make uh, a Fallen Kingdom, or wait, yeah, Fallen Kingdom, as good as we want it to be. Do you think having them is a good thing, or do you think they should have stuck with Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard? Uh, no, I think I think it's a good way, if this is truly the finale, I think it's a good way to connect the movies and connect the franchise and give the yeah. people what they wanted in the first place, which is more, you know, Jeff Goldblum, because we all <laughs> deserve a little more Jeff Goldblum in our lives. Everybody, everybody could use a little more Jeff Goldblum. Now, that's that's not to say people that Chris Pratt is not going to be in this. Chris right. Pratt, Bryce Dallas Howard, I'm sure will absolutely be in this. It'll be a nice melding of the two, the two franchises here together. Um, I'm excited. I'm very excited, and uh, we're all in this together. So we're going to see, uh, we're going to see how it goes. But you know, we'll be here to review that one when it comes out. That's it, guys. That is our review of Yasuke and our current event for today, letting you guys know a little bit about what's going on in the movie cinema world. If you like this review, we really appreciate a thumbs up. Like we say, thumbs up, thumbs down, fair is fair. Do what you got to do. Also, if this is your first time checking out Critic and the Common Man, or if you're watching and you're not subscribed right now, and yes, I'm talking to you, it takes literally two seconds to just move your mouse and click subscribe before you exit out of this or before you click on something else. I see your thumbs moving on the phone. I see you guys going to click out of this already. Check out our <laughs> channel. We have a ton of stuff. They're pretty short reviews. We call it a podcast. It's kind of just turned into more of a generic channel, but there are some longer podcast forms episodes that we still do. Um, so you can look for those coming out as well. Or you can just binge a bunch of these if you're a movie lover like us. Uh, movie, TV, video game trailers, you name it, we've got it. Short films. Uh, we always appreciate a subscribe. 
jump on over to Critic and the Common Man on Instagram. We have a really funny page that we keep. Uh, a lot of good memes on there. A lot of good discussions going on. CriticandtheCommonMan.com. Um, some shop stuff coming soon. So if you are somebody who subscribed or if you just like our style, you like what you have to hear, we got some really cool merch headed your way. Uh, stay tuned for that. We're thinking about doing like a 100 subscriber. Uh, and we are deal, we're working on a teddy like bear a from now. that actually uh, – Danny's voice will come out of so you give it a squeeze at night and he'll say something he'll say something sweet like right. like this you're not wearing any clothing exactly like that so yeah something yeah. like that something to really help you fall right. asleep at night you know what I mean um, so that's it guys that was our review of Yasuke uh, again not just season one probably it and that's probably for, for the better <laughs> leave a comment down below let us know what you have to say Chris are we out of here yeah um, I do want to just let people know especially specifically almond lovers out there did you know that uh, my city of Sacramento here in California, um, we're the largest producer of, of, well, we have the largest producing plant power, like almond plant in, in, in all of the world, really. 12 million pounds per harvest. It's a lot. So, <clears throat> you know. That is a real testament to uh, uh, evolution, yeah. uh, biologic evolution. Did you know? Because almonds were actually one of the last nut to be uh, 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 domesticated and become non-poisonous. Almonds used to be toxic to Is people, that true? and they are no longer. That's absolutely wow. true. That's wow. right. Gave them the counter, and ladies and gentlemen. That's a great segue, I was ready because this, this entire time. episode was brought to you by Blue Diamond. <laughs> I wish, I dude. I would be munching on a bag of those those uh, lightly salted, roasted, sweet almonds. Blue, Blue Diamond, Diamond, help if, us out. Help if us help you're you. watching, uh, sponsor us, and we will literally eat a box, a bag, whatever, of almonds We'll do an episode. almond challenge. It, who better to review your almonds than a review right. channel? You know yeah. what I mean? That's it, guys. Critic and the Common Man, we are out of here. Yasuke, see you, everybody. Peace. Peace.